Well, Assassin's Creed 2 uh, starts where, say, uh, Assassin's Creed 1 ended. It means that uh, we still play with uh, Desmond Miles, who's like experimenting some weird stuff in a machine called Anonymous that lets you relive the life an, uh, of an ancestor through your like scanning of your DNA. So we're back into his shoes, and this time around, though, Desmond's going to relive the life of Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Which means that you're gonna play an ancestor in the Italian uh, time of the Renaissance. So it's the Italian Renaissance. And the uh, Ezio character is a guy who's not an assassin at first. The story is uh, the story of a young noble Florentine and that something will happen to him and he will have to become an assassin if he wants to survive. AC1 was about being a lonely soldier, you know, a lonely assassin. You see too, it introduced the, this idea of a family. So you can hire also some people from a faction, from different faction, to help you out. And uh, they can help you out during an approach by doing some diversion. They can help you out while fighting, they'll join the fight. Um, and even during an escape then, because they can stop some people from following you. So, um, and those people again will use the economic system so they'll be available for you to hire. Instead of having five or six different mission types, now we're roughly around 15. But also, instead of having a structure that is almost the same from beginning to end, right? In AC1, it was all about, you have nine targets to, to kill, you do your investigation, and then you're assassinated, and you go back to your master, that's gone. That's totally, you know, in the trash can. Now it's more this life of, uh, the, the life of Ezio, and a lot of stuff will happen to him throughout uh, the game, and so the missions are more hidden. There's no, you're, you're not that warrior monk anymore. You're that normal person who have to deal with, with, with stuff while learning to become an assassin. And then, so when I say I have, we have 15 mission types. What we do, it's not only like we only have like uh, an assassination, for example. That's a mission type, but we can play with that mission type and put another one besides it. So we could start with a, like an escort mission that transforms itself into an assassination mission. So with those 15 different types, we can create like an endless numbers of missions. Right now, roughly, we're around 200 different missions in this world we're creating. Since it's the se a sequel, we have the first game and then we build on top of it. So everything that was in the first game is still in it. But then we've created like new moves in the climbing, for example, with the, the addition of a climb leap, lets you like jump in the in the climbing, make it uh, faster. In the fight department, I wanted to have a character that is really much more an assassin than a warrior. That may be in the first game uh, the character was. So uh, that's why he's so good with his arm. So he can disarm his opponent. So he doesn't have, he doesn't need this big weapon and all the swords, even though he'll have them. He doesn't need them. So you can disarm enemies and use their, their, their weapons against them. We worked a lot also on the AI to bring new archetypes, new enemies that will ask more from the player. Some enemies are good at chasing you, others are good at fighting you, fighting you, and others are good at finding you. So all those archetypes like, uh, creates different experience. Again, ask from the player a lot more than the guards or the enemies in, of AC1. The AI, it's, is it more intelligent per se? I don't know. But the system that drives the AI, mm -hmm. the thing you're gonna play with as a player is as more, uh, as more grades into it. So it's more, it's not like AC1 was on off. Are you seen or not? And if it's not, you're good. This time around, AI will remember you. They will try to find you. You know, they will scold you, for example, say, oh, you're not supposed to do that and follow you to see if you are the assassin or not. You have the ability to swim. It's really important. Uh, and then also, but you have the ability to take some boats and drive them. The uh, stealth assassination with the double hidden blade is kind of neat. And that's brand new and uh, the same, uh, I hope it will remain throughout other games if we make some. Going with the Renaissance, it gave us the opportunity to use some really unique and, and well-known historical figure. And Leonardo da Vinci is, is, is a one, one of them. He's the best friend of Ezio. So he's, he's kind of like, he's there from the beginning till the end of the game, roughly. 
without telling too much. But is is the is Ezio's queue? There's no one giving the gadgets, uh, building machines like the flying machine. Um, he's there to uh, help a lot. He's really when you don't actually know what to do, go see go see Leonardo. He's there to help you out. Desmond will do more than walk. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say because uh, I don't want to spoil it. Maybe some will, but, but not not me. Uh, he will do more than only walk around and, and try to find some clues. That's for sure. You know what's great about our brand is that you we could go anywhere we want. We've created a machine that lets you relive the life of an ancestor through your DNA. I don't know how many like ancestor we've got, but we you know pretty much go until you know we're basically a a, a monkey. Yeah. I don't know you know where do we stop to play even like a fish. But still you know there's so many. So we could have an ancestor during the French Revolution. It's a great idea. It wasn't our plan though. Our plan since January 2008 has to go in the Italian Renaissance, that's for sure. So uh, it's Assassin's Creed 2, it's coming out uh, this holiday on PS3, 360 and PC.